Hey guys, this is Elena Singen Lee from We Learn to Share. Welcome to the video of AP US History. In this video, we're gonna dive into the exciting and transformative 1940s to 1960s civil rights movements. Get ready for a journey through time that will leave you inspired and informed. Let's start with the 1940s, so a decade of change and progress. We first have the Executive Order 9181 issued by President Truman. This was a game changer. It desegregated the military, breaking down racial barriers and setting an important precedent. And this was important because at this time, the World War was going on, right? And basically, the African-American soldiers, the black soldiers, just like any other white soldiers would do, they were basically fighting for the U.S., they were fighting for the country, and really had the patriotism in their minds. However, they were still segregated, and they were treated differently, discriminated by the soldiers, right? So the soldiers were basically angry about this, and that became the basis for President Truman for issuing the Executive Order 9981, which desegregated the military. And during this time, there was also an attempt at passing a Civil Rights Act. However, opposition from the Dexecret parties in the 1948 election hindered its progress, and it actually led to the Dexecret parties um, to be split and the party splitting into the election of 19 in the election of 1948. But fear not, because the fight of, for equality was just getting started. Fast forward to 1950s, where the segregation in schools tour took central stage. So in 1940, sorry, 1954, we have the famous, iconic Brown versus Board of Education, um, which declared segregation in school was unconstitutional. And this um, decision led by Chief Justice Earl Warren showcased judicial activism at its finest. And judicial activism basically means um, actively overturning the precedence of the um, of the former presidents or former court cases or Supreme Court case decisions in the past. So in this case of Brown versus Board of Education, it said that separate but equal was unconstitutional. This was not right, right? Because, uh, sorry, uh, be, and this is basically judicial activism overturning the precedent. However, um, not everyone embraced this ruling because in the South, the 1956 Declaration of Constitutional Principles, also known as the Southern Manifesto, sought to resist desegregation, desegregation efforts. Private schools emerged as an alternative to evade integration. But fight for equality could not be silenced. In 1957, the Little Rock Nine faced fierce opposition as they bravely integrated Central High School in Arkansas. And who can forget the pivotal moment when Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on Montgomery bus in 1955, sparking the historic Montgomery bus boycotts. Over here, right? And enter Martin Luther King Jr., a beacon of hope and the face of the civil rights movement. He, along with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC, led the charge for change. In their iconic 1963 march on Washington, D.C., with King's famous I Have a Dream speech, United Voices for Equality. And remember that this 1963 march in Washington, D.C. for um, equality and jobs was a very, very iconic and very, very momentous moment in the civil rights movement in the United States history because they, um, they basically demanded for eliminating Jim Crow laws, which kept the segregation after the civil, after the civil war, and also the segregation of schools and also economic justice. And this was the march in which various organizations came together. For example, we have NAACP, we have SNCC, that's Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee. So student organization came here too, and we have AFL-CIO, that's American Federation of Labor. So that would be labor unions was joining this march too. And we have SCLC, that's the um, Martin Luther King's Jr. Southern Christian Leadership Conference. So various, various, many, many people, many, many people, both black and white, both people from very different eras or different um, realms came together for shouting equality to the um, to the government and to the world, right? And it's also important to remember that at this time, uh, not at this time, or at this march, they demanded several things, and one of them was the Fair Employment Practices Act. And this was later realized in the Civil Rights Act of 1964 by the creation of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, and also the enforcement of 15th Amendment, which granted the right to vote to every citizen, was realized a little later, one year later, in the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And the momentum continued in the 1960s civil rights movement um, with the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So let's look at this shortly right after, right? So we have the Civil Rights Act um, of 1964. And this was a very comprehensive um, civil rights bill and the groundbreaking legislation that prohibited discrimination and segregation in various aspects of society. I told you right before that it created the Equal Employment um, Opportunity Commission, which 
was a realization of the demand from the march in Washington, D.C. in 1963, the Fair Employment Practices Act, right, which created fair hiring practices. However, there was some resistance. Of course, there was a segregationist or racist governor, um, George Wallace, and also um, the 1965 Bloody Sunday also emerged um, after the passage of Civil Rights Act. And then we have the 1965 Voting Rights Act, this was passed by President Lyndon B. Johnson, and this removed barriers to black enfranchisement in the South. For example, it banned poll taxes, literacy taxes, and etc. And it authorized federal officials to send the South to register black voters and supervise elections in disenfranchised African American districts. And also, the important thing to remember over here is that who passed the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act? Of course, if you see the years, and it's 1964 and it's 1965, so of course, President Lyndon B. Johnson had, had, thus, had done this. But in case of Civil Rights Act, um, it was initially John F. Kennedy who had introduced this bill that would later become the Civil Rights Act. And however, before the bill was passed to become an act or a law by the Congress, um, it, um, President John F. Kennedy was unfortunately assassinated in Dallas, Texas, and that led him LBJ to become the his successor, the next president, right? So you should remember that um, JFK, John F. Kennedy, was the first one who introduced this idea and the bills that will later become the Civil Rights Act that was later passed during the um, Lyndon B. Johnson's presidency. Okay, having this said, now let's look at the students, right? Um, the youth. So in 1960, the Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee um, emerged, led by inspiring figures like Ella Baker, who shouted out Freedom Now. And um, they organized something that's called sit-ins, which is a nonviolent act of civil disobedience, demanding equality and justice. The start was from Greensboro, North Carolina. And there was the Brave Freedom Riders of 1961. And um, there were several different student organizations um, or civil rights organizations um, participating in this Freedom Rights of 1961. For example, there was from the um, Congress uh, for Racial Equ uh, Equality led by James Farmer to desegregate bus stops. And SNCC, of course, participated, completed the right despite there were fire bombings and several violence. And also John Lewis, um, who later became the leader in civil rights movements, he also participated or um, really stuck for the freedom rights. And what the freedom right is, is necessarily, it's really riding the buses for freedom. So basically, it is the, um, there will be several people, um, basically these civil rights activists, like the students over here, who will ride buses into the south and then um, they will stop in the bus stops and then they will literally smash down segregation things for example there will be like white um, like there will be restrooms for only white use there will be restrooms for only black use and every bus stop they will stop there they will um, get off the bus and then they will crash that segregation of things for black for white that thing and then they will basically jump up and then they will um, continue its journey and um, continue their journey of smashing these segregation things so that's called freedom rights and that was supported by the president john f kennedy too and then we have uh, 1964 um, the civil rights movement reached a critical juncture with the Freedom Summer. And this was when the hundreds of students, both from the North and the South, flocked to Mississippi to help African Americans register to vote. And despite facing violence and intimidation, these young activists stood strong, determined to make a difference. And as the 1960s progressed, the SNCC experienced a split. That was after... Um, over here, um, Stokely Carmichael, he emerged as a leading figure advocating for the Black Power Movement, which we're going to look shortly after. And this movement emphasized African-American self-defense and racial pride, taking a different achieve or different approach to achieving quality than the nonviolent method of figures like Ella Baker over here, who said freedom now, or basically the core ideal of SNCC, hence its name Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee. This person is talking Carmichael as he embraced the Black Power Movement. He actually changed the SNCC. SNCC's name into Student National Coordinating Committee because um, the Black Power Movement, the core ideal of Black Power Movement was achieving freedom or equality by all means necessary, necessary including some, non, some, some violent things too. So that's why it changed its name and kind of um, lean more towards violence and other methods that are necessary to, to achieve freedom and equality right now. And then um, let's look at some 
limits, and descents. So first we have Malcolm X and the Black Power Movement. So as I've told you before, it's by any means necessary. So it was achieving equality and freedom by all means necessarily, regardless of its violence. So it's kind of um it kind of is very different from the idea and from the ideals that activists like Martin um Luther King Jr. embraced because he really stressed nonviolence, right? And this was also African American self defense and racial pride. And we had their called this was based on the um religion called Nation of Islam or also called the Black Muslims. And this was kind of different from the Orthodox Muslims. And in case of Malcolm X, he was an advocate for the Nation of Islam, and then he was the um. He kind of explored more upon the Black Power movement, although later he turned more to the um, Orthodox Sunni Muslim and kind of criticized Nation of Islam at the end. Still, um, you can just remember Malcolm X as a figure of the Black Power movement, and it greatly influenced in Black power and violence as a means of self-defense. And this, again, is different from Martin Luther King Jr., who really um, advocated for nonviolent means. And then we had the foundation of 1966 Black Panther Party in the um in Oakland, Oakland, California. And this was basically made by Hugh P. Newton and Bobby Seale. This was also basically inspired by the Black Power movement and the idea of Black pride, racial pride. And also um, what they did was that in California, there was an open carry gun. So basically, um, they would firstly face the... They will act against the police brutality in the uh, area of California. Uh, and then um, they act as a local militia by carrying these guns to protect the black people. And also they also had some community services like providing breakfast and stuff to the black people around. And um, they had more drug rehabilitation programs, self-defense classes, etc. too. Okay. So that concludes our exploration of the civil rights movement that you need to briefly know for the 1940s through 1960s for a push from the brave freedom writers to the impeccable NCC to the um, Black Power movement. This era witnessed extraordinary acts of courage and resilience in the fight for equality. And we, I hope you enjoyed this enlightening journey through history. Remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Stay tuned for more captivating episodes of AP US History videos. Um, and thank you for watching this video, and see you in the next.